After a disappointing loss last week at unranked Southern Illinois, the Liberty Flames will continue their four-game road stretch this week in Atlanta. Saturday, 18th-ranked Liberty will face another first-time opponent in Georgia State. And this week's preparation has been all about eliminating distractions. Like this week right here, we got a lot of distractions. We got rain all week this week, supposed to be. Um, that's one distraction. Then we got to go on the road again. You know, that's going to be another distraction. Then with the loss, we, uh, but after all these distractions, we just got to, you know, maintain, you know, stay focused and we'll be all right. Maybe we were a little too confident coming off the Montana game that, um, you know, we thought we would, we would just be able to go out there and, you know, play as good as we did against Montana when um, each, each game is different and you have to show up to every game and, you know, play your best. And obviously we didn't, and that's why we lost on Saturday. Uh, simple things that we've done the first three games we did not do this past Saturday. Uh, and so, you know, that was very disappointing. Uh, like I told them, the reason I'm not down on them is because we are so young and sometimes you got to unfortunately have those growing pains to make them realize how important preparation is. Preparation for Georgia State has been a little bit touch and go this week because of the weather in Lynchburg. However, the skies did clear up in time for Tuesday's practice at Williams Stadium, although more rain is expected later in the week. Obviously, weather won't be a factor on Saturday when the Flames and Panthers meet inside the Georgia Dome. It'll be the first time that the Flames have played in an NFL venue since 2001, a loss to USF in Tampa. This week, many of the Flames said that they're very excited about the opportunity to play at the Dome, and the coaching staff is also embracing it. Say you played in an NFL stadium, uh, that's part of it, being 18 to 22 years old, uh, having that experience of it all there, and then knowing you're going to have good conditions, you don't have to worry about all those type of things. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a little bit of us to, to coach them up in a way and not letting distractions or certain things or certain environment uh, going to dictate how they play. It's a different look, you know, you got to get used to the lighting uh, and how it looks. Uh, also with the Georgia Dome too, uh, with there being an NFL field, you got different hash marks and number alignments and stuff too. So um, just being able to see that and get in that, that environment and everything uh, will be fun. And Calling plays should also be more fun for Aaron Stam this week. Tuesday, Coach Turner Gill said wide receiver Darren Peterson is expected to play this week after sitting out the Southern Illinois game with a lower body injury. In Peterson's absence last week, B.J. Farrow stepped up with his first 100-yard receiving game and earned Big South Freshman of the Week honors. It's a big honor for me knowing that uh, coming off a year off of football, just coming back and just getting my game back, uh, it's pretty exciting. I just knew I had to step up with uh, P.D. being out. I just knew it was my turn to go out there and make plays for us. While there aren't many concerns about the passing game, the Flames are focused on reestablishing the run. After rushing for 229 yards in its season opening win over Delaware State, Liberty has been held to just 251 yards on the ground in its last three games combined. It's a lot of unfortunate events that's happened in the past couple of weeks, but you know, the running game is all about confidence. It's all about, you know, beating a man across the ball from you. We got to get better at the execution of it too, you know, and on a fourth and one twice in a ball game. Sometimes it just comes down to being a man on a man and, and, and getting it done. And, you know, they did a better job than we did. And that was, those are two ball plays that we needed to, we needed to execute better on. And we didn't, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been a focus uh, as we've moved forward quickly. This week, Liberty faces a Georgia State defense that's allowed 186 rushing yards per game. That ranks 91st in FBS football. Granted, the Panthers allowed 311 yards on the ground in a lopsided loss at 12th-ranked Oregon. Meanwhile, the Panthers' spread offense is led by senior quarterback Nick Arbuckle, who has seven touchdown passes in three games. His 329 yards passing per game is 10th best in the country. You can see the growth and maturity just on the field from his junior year to this year. His his moxie, his swag, you know, the way he's communicating with the receivers, how he's putting guys in checks, how he's making adjustments in protection. You know, he throws the ball very well. He's very good in his decision making. You know, not the greatest of runners, but, you know, he's smart. He knows when to take off. He knows how to slide. Georgia State also boasts one of the top freshman receivers in the country, Penny Hart whose seven catches per game are second most amongst all FBS freshmen, and his three touchdown grabs lead the Sun Belt Conference. Hart's not alone. Sophomore wideout Robert Davis is already Georgia State's second all-time leading receiver, and the Panthers are expecting to have seniors Donovan Harden and Avery Sweeting back from injuries. You know, they're an FBS team, so they're going to be athletic. They're going to be fast. They're big. Um, 
they're a lot better than the record was last year. They're a lot better team than last year. Getting down and just stopping and forcing the ball back inside towards our help, that's going to be the main thing that we have to do. We played against Montana. They ran the spread. And, you know, a big school as well. They had a lot of big receivers. I mean, that's what we got to do. We just got to execute. One other note for the Flames secondary. It'll have to execute without the services of Wesley Scott, who's out this week with what's being called a lower body injury. He suffered at Southern Illinois. Saturday's game will kick off at 3.30 inside the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. A win for the Flames would be their first inside any dome. It would be their fourth over an FBS program and their second under Coach Turner Gill. In Lynchburg, I'm Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.